So they were inside the car and then Mr. Hazel's head was surrounded by all the pheasants in his car as he drove. Drive on, Mr. Hazel, sir, shouted Sergeant Sunways through the window in his most commanding policeman's voice. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get going, quick, quick, quick. There's no time to lose. Ignore those pheasants, Mr. Hazel, and accelerate that engine as quick as you can. Mr. Hazel did not have much choice. He had to make a run for it now. He started the engine and the great Rolls Royce shot off down the road with countless pheasants rising up from it in all directions. Then, Extraordinary thing happened. The pheasants that had flown up off the car stayed in the air. They didn't come flapping down as we'd hoped they would. They stayed up and they kept on flying. Over the top of the filling station they flew, and over the caravan, and over the field at the back where the little outdoor lavatory stood, and over the next field, and over the crest of the hill, until they disappeared from sight. Great Scott! shouted Doc Spencer. Just look at that. They recovered. The sleeping pills have worn off. <gasps> now, all the pheasants around the place were beginning to come up. They were standing up tall on their legs and ruffling their feathers and turning their heads quickly from side to side. One or two of them started running about, and then all the others started running. And when Sergeant Sunway slapped his arms at them, the whole lot took off into the air and flew over the filling station and were gone. Suddenly, there was not a pheasant left. And it was very interesting to see that none of them had flown across the road or even down the road into the direction of Hazel's Wood. Every one of them had flown in exactly the opposite direction of Hazel's Wood. And that's the end of the chapter. See you tomorrow.